welcome to night number 100 of History Bedtime Stories in Bed in Our Pajamas. And tonight we're talking about Reverend Orrin Cook Thompson. Thompson was born in 1805 in Massachusetts. By the time he's nine, he's living in Ohio with his family, and he goes on to be educated at the Western Reserve College and later Princeton Theological Seminary. He moves to Michigan in 1831, settling outside of Ann Arbor, and has to make a little trip down to Ohio in 1832 to marry the love of his life, Alice Thompson. No relation, just a very popular last name on February 1st of that year. When they go on to have two sons and one daughter, but they also go on to be prominent abolitionists here in the city of Detroit. They set up the St. Clair Academy in 1842. It's a school that under the direction of Reverend Thompson educates people like David Jerome, who goes on to become a Michigan governor, and Thomas Palmer, who later becomes a United States Senator. During this time, they're living in St. Clair, but the pull of Detroit is starting to get to them. And in 1847, they move into the city proper. By 1849, establishing their business here, and Thompson goes to work for his friend, Eber Brock Ward, the first millionaire in Michigan. He owned the Ward Steamliner Company. And as he's working as the treasurer for Ward Steamliners, he is still a very big member of the Underground Railroad. At the family home in St. Clair, they offer shelter, food, supplies, and a rowboat across the river to any freedom-seeking escaped enslaved person who happened to be able to get to them via the conductors or the guides of the Underground Railroad. In Detroit, they do the same, except now the rowboat is going over the Detroit River, ferrying escaped slaves into the final freedom of Canada in Windsor. As the abolitionist movement grows, they consider the Thompsons really at the heart of it. In 1837, they were at the first ever Michigan Anti-Slavery Convention, and it was there that Reverend Thompson was elected vice president for the committee. He continues to be a prominent member of the Underground Railroad until the call for the Civil War comes. At this point, he's considered an old man. He is well into his fifth decade, and no one expects him to sign up. Yet, he volunteers. He becomes part of the United States Christian Commission, which was similar to a Red Cross. They didn't bear weapons, but they offered medical treatment, convalescence, and prayer at battle sites for wounded soldiers. Under Reverend Thompson, this extends to escaped enslaved people who find their way to the Union Army. When the war ends, he comes back to Detroit and takes up his Presbyterian ministry once again. When he passes away on June 4th, 1880, it is a sad day in Detroit to lose the now 75-year-old Reverend Thompson. He's remembered that July by the Princeton alumni newspaper as a profound abolitionist. More than one fugitive slave found refuge in his house in Detroit and pilotage across the river by the famous underground route. His death closed a long and useful career, one marked by great energy and great industry. I hope you're enjoying history bedtime stories. We'll see you tomorrow night. Wash your hands.